The Browns are three and one, right? Uh, but we're going to start the podcast off with a little bit of bad news. Uh, Nick Chubb placed on injured reserve officially today. So he has to miss at least three games. It's probably going to be more than that, Mary Kay. So let's just start here. Can, can you kind of give us the update on where we are with Nick Chubb right now? Well, first of all, I actually think that they dodged a bullet in some ways because this could have been very serious. Uh, it could have been a season ending knee injury and we could have been talking about Nick Chubb coming back next year, but they do expect him to come back this season. Uh, we said there was one report on NFL network that he will be out about six games. That would give him uh, if that is true. Now, Kevin Stefanski wouldn't confirm it. Uh, he's saying, let's not put anything past Nick Chubb because you know, some guys come back sooner than you think. Uh, and we do know that Nick has come back from a very serious knee injury before, and he defied the odds with that one. So uh, if he can come back before six weeks, that's great. If not, uh, he'll be back for the home stretch. He'll be back for those last six games of the season. And uh, which I think, you know, I mean, if, if he's had some rest, maybe he'll actually have fresh legs and, and be uh, really ready to go for that for that home final stretch. And in the meantime, they have the 2017 rushing yardage leader to plug on in there. I don't <laughs> want to be negative, but so here's here's the thing. And I was trying to double check it, but they are running the ball so much. They are really running the ball more than a single tailback can carry the load for, right? I mean, they're, they're running the ball 37, right? 35 times a game. So unbelievable that your second option is a guy with a rushing title. So Kareem Hunt is great. But if they're going to keep being the team they've been, they need someone else to carry that ball. So Dernis Johnson looked great in a fill-in role on Sunday. I do think it becomes different when a team... There's no way Dallas ever expected that guy to be on the field. Now they're going to expect that guy to be on the field. Often guys are capable of filling in in the moment and looking great. And then over time, it starts to be like, oh yeah, that's why that guy was a third stringer. He is really not as good. So I do think I mean, as, as much as we have to give all the credit to the scheme, all the, the credit to the offensive line, this is a big deal. And I just, you can't give the ball to Kareem Hunt 30 times a game for the next month and a half. So they're either going to have to be a little different than they've been on offense, or they're really going to need, whether it's Johnson or Don Trail Hilliard or somebody to really prove that they can be a second back who can take eight, 10 carries a game and be a legit threat and be a dude. And I just don't know that we can assume that right now. So they are set up as any team in the league to weather an injury to a running back as important as Nick Chubb. A lot of other teams would be like, we're dead. Our, our backup stinks. But it is still a big deal because that guy is elite. You know, I'd feel a little better if I wasn't, if I felt better about Kareem Hunt's injury right now. You know, he only carried the ball, what, 11 times on Sunday. He didn't actually come into the game and get a carry until late in the first quarter. Uh, so if Kareem Hunt's not 100%, I'm a little concerned. But I do think, you know, you, you can – you can come up with something, right? A, a normal NFL team doesn't have these two high-level backs who would essentially be top 10, maybe even top five backs in, in the NFL if you wanted to make that argument. So you could give Kareem Hunt 20 to 25 carries, and I think you could cobble together another 10 from the Ernest Johnson. What you would lose, though, and I was thinking about this today, and I actually texted this out to our football insiders, I think the thing you really lose is you know, we saw Dearness Johnson break off some eight yard runs some 10 yard runs. I do think you lose that second level explosion there that hunt and Chubb give you, of course, you'll, you'll hopefully still get it from hunt, but you know, those guys turn those, those big wide lanes into 20, 30, 40 yard touchdown runs. And that's kind of what you lose uh, with you. You know, if you're handing it off to Dearness Johnson and Dontrell Hilliard, you know, Dearness Johnson, good luck, man. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he's a diamond in the rough, but I do think it's possible if, if you got, do you think with what the offense they have been, if they've, if they want to run it 35 times with the tailbacks, ideally when they have Chubb and hunt in this world, do you pull back a little bit? Is this mean, does this mean Baker's going to throw it five to seven times more per game? Or do you still keep the plan? And as you said, Mary Kay, you work in maybe some of the more, the, the receivers reverses and that kind of thing and really just rely on Dearness Johnson or do you have to tweak who you are as an offense by 10 or 15 or 20 percent the other thing that we'll do 
is it will give them some good data. What would life without Nick Chubb be like? Now, nobody really <laughs> wants to envision that, but it's a business. It is a business. And now there will be a chicken and the egg thing because the next couple of defenses are going to be tough. And if they don't run the ball as well in the next couple of weeks, it's going to be like, hmm, is that because they played good defenses or is that because they don't have Nick Chubb? And we might not know the answer to that question for a while. The ongoing game of how good are the Browns continues to be a, a <laughs> convoluted, impossible to get a grip on game. But it's fun to play. At three and one, it's sure fun to play. 